Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton-Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. This video lesson is looking at using discount factors for engineering economics problems. Let's look at, again, this table of discount factors from our textbook. We had introduced these in a previous lesson, and the way that we use these is that we see these as a way of multiplying and in fact if I wanted to take something where I had a present value and I wanted to turn it into a future value then what I would do is I would simply say I would like to multiply by F and divide by P and this is the way we define this discount factor. Now, just a reminder that for each of these, the present values, if you're talking about annuities, are the year before the first payment. So we start at time zero. And future values are the year of the final payment. So let's assume that we plan to take out a $20,000 loan at 3.5% per annum. We're compounding this monthly so that we can purchase a car. And we want to know what the monthly car payments would be if we took out a three-year loan or a five-year loan. So let's just work this. In this case, for all of these problems, I is 0 0.035, that's per annum. M is 12 times per year. And my principal value is 20,000. I'm looking for A. Here I'm looking for A using 36 monthly payments. Here I'm looking for A using 60, 5 times 12 monthly payments. So for this first version of this, the annuity amount or the payment amount is going to be $20,000. I'm going to take my interest rate divided by 12. My monthly, there should only be one zero there, sorry about that. Um, interest rate 0 0.035 over 12. I'm doing this for 36 months all divided by 1 plus 0 0.035 over 12 to the 36 minus 1. Get out your calculator. Your monthly payments are $586.04. If I repeat this for 60 payments, then what changes is simply the number of payments. So I'm doing 60 payments instead of 36. And course the amount is less it turns out that this time the amount is three hundred and sixty three dollars and eighty four cents so how much interest is paid using the 36 month plan well the amount I pay is 36 times five hundred eighty six point oh four and the amount that was my principal value is 20,000, so I'll subtract that off. And what I find is that $1,097.44 went to interest. Using the 60 month plan, 60 payments at 363.84 minus that 20,000 purchase price my interest is $1,830.40. So yes, I lowered my interest or my monthly payments a lot, okay, but 
I also increased the amount that I paid in interest. And so these are the sorts of things that you might use on a very practical basis to help make decisions for your future. Let's look at another example. You're going to very shortly be out of school and having opportunities to invest some of that salary that you'll be bringing in. So currently the maximum amount you can invest in a Roth IRA is $5,500 a year. And let's say you start doing this at age 25 for 40 years. If you can achieve an 8% per annum interest rate, how much would you have at age 65 in future dollars? So in this particular case, my annuity is 5,500. My interest rate, and we'll just do this with simple, not compounded, uh, or it's compounded, but annual interest rate, 0 0.08. And I'm going to do this for 40 years. Okay. And I want to know the future value. So the future value is going to be the annuity amount. And I want the discount factor. I want to get the future value based on an annuity using an interest rate of 0 0.08 and 40 years. And if you use that in the formula, I'll trust you to go back and look that up. We end up with, you have $1.4 million in the bank. Now, what happens if you wait until you're age 40? You say, ah, I'm not retiring for a long time. I'll wait. Okay, well, in this case, I'll work this one in blue. N is going to change to only 25 years. And so therefore, this time, I'm still only allowed to invest 5,500 at this special deal, okay? It's still future based on an annuity. Interest rate didn't change. The time period changed. And in this case, I end up with $402,000 and change. So way less than half, okay? So I'm going to use this as an opportunity to encourage you that you will start investing and saving money for your retirement early because clearly we can see the effect of starting young. Even if you were to take a year off in there and not invest anything, you would still do better to have started early. So this concludes this lesson. In our next lesson, we're going to look at a gradient series where the amount of our payment is not uniform, but grows at a uniform rate. So thank you very much for your time.